So this is the 11 Pro Max and this is the iPhone 14 Pro Max. Now the 11 Pro Max has been on the market for four years and I'm leaving these in a case just to show you how thick these phone differences are um, with the iPhone 14 Pro Max versus the 11 Pro Max. And you can see the curved nature of the 11 Pro Max and the 14 Pro Max. When you place this boys on a table, there is much more of a lift because most cases will integrate a camera, you know, a raised camera to protect the cameras on the already raised up iPhone 14 Pro Max. And so in this episode, I wanna to talk to you about my four years later thoughts with the iPhone 11 Pro Max versus what's current, the iPhone 14 Pro Max. And if you've held out this long, if you should consider you know, getting this when it comes down or just going to the upcoming 15 Ultra or 15 Pro Max, whatever they're gonna call it. So the 11 Pro Max was the last iPhone Max to have the curved edges here, a lot like the iPhone 10. The last one to have a 6.5 inch display. And it was one of the lighter iPhone Maxes, you know, in the past few years, the 10S Max was even lighter, but this is not quite as light as the 14 Plus, but it really was the iPhone that introduced the textured back you know, it was basically a really big leap with the triple cameras and they just gotten bigger and bigger. And it's funny to think how tiny those look now comparatively to the lenses on the 14 Pro Max. Um, but at the time, these things were really quite big. This does have an Apple A13 Bionic chipset, which is several years older and only four gigs of RAM, which is often found on the regular edition iPhones. It still has the latest OS updates to iOS 16. 0.6 and again with the triple 12 megapixel camera on the rear it did introduce the ultra wide but also brought a telephoto as well but this telephoto doesn't zoom quite as far as the current models it can only do 2x and up to 10 times zoom which is not quite the 15 you can do on the iphone 13 pro max or the iphone 14 pro max all right so the build quality between both of these how much better has it gotten over the years and you know of using these two products and four years later has it really been that much better and the answer is not really so the 11 pro max even to this day feels just about as premium in my opinion as the iphone 14 pro max when it comes to the stainless steel edges um, the back texture is pretty much the same even though the cameras are much larger on the 14 pro max the back texture is about the same the weight does give you a little bit more of a substantial feel for the iPhone 14 Pro Max, but the phone itself didn't feel too much more premium, just a little bit, you know, more squared, well, a little bit more squared here. It's still curved a little bit at the edges, but you know what I'm saying. This is more of a curved kind of size here. It just felt a little more comfortable in the hand in my personal take, um, but overall the weight definitely gives the iPhone 14 Pro Max a little bit more of density, so it can feel a little more premium in that sense. But overall, you know, these phones, over the four years, I would say Apple's been employing essentially the same type of material uh, since the 11 Pro Max. And so the 11 Pro Max has held on very well going into its fourth year here, just in September. And um, would you wanna upgrade in terms of the build? I would say if they go to a titanium model, yes. Um, if you're going to the 14 Pro Max, it's going to be more of a size jump versus a, such a better build. You'll definitely feel the difference in design because of the industrial square edges, but you won't feel too much more in the term of premium. So the iPhone 11 Pro Max, if you look closely, does have definitely a bigger notch. And we do have a dynamic island for the 14 Pro Max, and that really does set it apart and making it look like a much newer phone or the latest phone that came out. But honestly, I think the Galaxy S10 Plus had this type of cutout. So I think even if they put that back in 2019, it still would have looked up to date back then. So I do really think Apple is behind when it comes to the design of the display. Now, if they do go ahead and um, bring the bezels a little bit closer to edge a full screen which we're expecting for the 15 pro max that's going to be a very different look because most android phones have bigger bezels so i think apple's going to step it up with that but we're probably going to see dynamic island on all of the upcoming iphones and while it's not a bad thing all i'm saying here is that if you come from the notch over here to the dynamic island it will feel newer um, but the novelty of that wears off kind of fast and it's not really 
it's not like going to an all screen phone or something like that. It's just going to a smaller notch, essentially, that has some feature set to it. And those features are pretty cool. I'm not going to kid with you. I definitely would say that if you're looking for a phone with something a little bit more unique and different, this definitely is unique. Now, you can see when you enable a timer or you do start using the Dynamic Island, it definitely spreads out to be about the same size as a notch, but at least they're integrating something in there while we wait till we get to the point where we can have an all screen iPhone. So several months later, when it comes to, did I say several months, several years later, when it comes to Face ID, we still have the raise to wake on the iPhone 11 Pro Max and Face ID works wonderfully well. It's just as secure and it's been a great experience for the iPhone 11 Pro Max. Now on the 14 Pro Max, I do find it to be snappier. I think it's just a little bit better quicker and also just better on different angles. So this is kind of an upgrade in terms of the reliability, the speed, the angles at which it can see you. I do think the Face ID experience has become better all the way up until now. So while you still have it on the iPhone 11 Pro Max, it still works wonderfully well. I do think you have a snappier Face ID experience for the iPhone 14 Pro Max. Now, four years later, when it comes to the actual display, the biggest upgrade comes in the way of size. You get a 0.2 inch larger screen. I think next year we might see a 6.9 inch iPhone. Maybe not this year. We'll see. We'll see what happens, but definitely get a larger screen, but that comes with a weight penalty. We'll see if the 15 Ultra or Pro Max brings that weight down with titanium build. Um, but over here, you get a lot more brightness. So way more brightness. At the time, the 11 Pro Max was one of the brightest phones out there though. So. It's like around a thousand nits, something like that, 800. It's probably like 800, but it's pretty darn bright as well. So I don't really see it being an issue even now using an 11 Pro Max, although the 14 Pro Max brightness did increase substantially. And four years later, I do think they've refined and polished the display up. It's definitely bigger, a little bit more accurate, definitely a little bit. It's definitely way smoother than the iPhone 11 Pro Max with its 60 hertz but surprisingly i can still get by using 11 pro max with no issues i'm just saying the 14 pro max is a much more polished experience due to the 120 hertz pro motion display so other than that i would say that you have with the pill you have a little bit closer to a full screen but it's still in the way but you know overall it's it's a decent upgrade i wouldn't say it's massive so when it comes to the software this is the great thing about using an ios product is that you know i remember buying this phone brand new four years ago and i knew when i was picking this up at the apple stores that i'm gonna have great software support on this phone for several several years to come and that's exactly what happened i'm still running the latest and greatest ios 16.6 with the upcoming 17 version just next month so it's just really been fantastic to see that i can run the same things i can run on my 14 pro max on my 11 pro max and they don't really struggle too much the only thing that struggles a little bit on the iphone 11 pro max is the speed when you're doing heavy games and stuff like that you know some things can you know make this phone warm up a little bit it can throttle a little bit if you're playing heavy for a long time other than that, I don't really find it to be too much of an issue, but you can definitely see the performance gains with the iPhone 14 Pro Max with the A16 Bionic chip. It's just much snappier to go through things and load things. I would say in some cases, these phones these days are getting too fast. Like they're so fast, you can't even think before they're loading stuff up. So they're incredibly quick now, like the fastest you would ever expect. They're getting to that point and they're, they're gonna go even faster on the Apple iPhone 4, 15 Pro Max or 15 Ultra, whatever it's gonna be called, they're gonna go even quicker. So if you do want a nice performance jump though and you've had your 11 Pro Max, I would say at this point, you might wanna consider going to one of the upcoming phones or the iPhone 14 Pro or Pro Max. Okay, so four years later, as long as your battery health maximum capacity is up there still, the iPhone 11 Pro Max easily makes it a full day still. With the iPhone 14 Pro Max, in some cases, if I have the brightness jacked up, it would actually drain faster than my 11 Pro Max. The 11 Pro Max was one of the best battery life iPhones ever made. Um, and then they had the 12 Pro Max, which was a meh year. And then we had the 13 Pro Max, which upped the 11 Pro Max. So yeah, my battery capacity is still high on the 11 Pro Max because it hasn't been my main phone in a long time. But you know, four years later, since I still have a high maximum capacity, 
I can definitely still make it through a full day easily on that phone. As a matter of fact, it looks like it's draining a little slower in this video than the 14 Pro Max, but both of them can make it through a day, no problem. And now with the newer updates, they have the clean energy charging, should make it last longer. Battery life is just not an issue um, with these phones. For some people, the 14 Pro Max it is, but 11 Pro Max, even on the latest software, is doing okay. So the cameras, how do they stack up now on the iPhone 11 Pro Max versus the iPhone 14 Pro Max? You can see they're much larger on the 14 Pro Max, but if I go ahead and actually fire off a photo, what does it look like? So let me go ahead and take this shot on the 11 Pro Max. We have very good video still, 4K 60. I'll tell you the 11 Pro Max was the phone that started it off for me with wanting to really use iPhones as my main camera as a usage or as even a B tool. I still use, you know, an actual camera for video because I find the customization of the settings on a real camera is just easier to use. It's just better laid out. It's more focused in the sense that I don't get distracted by apps when I'm trying to make a video. But at the same time, the 11 Pro Max brought the 4K 60 on the rear and the front it matched up. It was really my favorite first, my first time I was really like, okay, these phones are ready to go. They're ready to rock in the studio and make videos and do that thing. And this phone still does it to this day. However, I will say that there's a level of noise in here that you can see, especially in lower light and um, where you don't see it in the iPhone 14 Pro Max. The 14 Pro Max has just much more sharp images um, just better dynamic range, macro modes. You can get super close to things on here. Not that you can't on the iPhone 11 Pro Max. You just got to use the wide angle, but now you have action modes. This is where Apple has really made substantial improvements over the years is the camera. So if you want to use this phone as a pro phone, this was a massive upgrade. This will be a massive upgrade over the 11 Pro Max. Even though the 11 Pro Max is still really good, this is a massive upgrade and the next iPhone is going to be even a bigger upgrade with the periscope lens. So they've been making huge changes to the camera and that's one of the best reasons you would want to buy one of the latest iPhones like the 14 Pro or Pro Max. In terms of the connectivity, we, this is an LTE phone over here. If you've held on this long, I will tell you 5G hasn't been life changing for me just yet. Uh, it's definitely been much faster, but not not like life changingly faster. So I don't think 5G really stood up to, you know, basically all the claims until you get into those spots where it actually does like 200 plus megabits down. Um, but, you know, in a lot of areas, you just don't get these type of speeds. So I think the 11 Pro Max still does just fine with its LTE performance. But the 14 Pro Max is still a big jump because as Qualcomm modems, it has better phone call quality, louder, crisper audio that comes out of the phones. And it just, it performs better as a phone. So, you know, just better signal strength wherever you go. It's pretty big leap there as well. So if you want to use this as a phone, which, which is what it is, you will definitely like the jump here. I also like this space black colorway. Very nice around here and then the back kind of like a space gray. But I love this midnight green as well that came on the 11 Pro Max. All right, so let's go ahead and just hop over to eBay. Now I'm not promoting you to buy a phone on eBay. I just like to check what people are selling for third party. Um, I still recommend you get it probably refurbished from a more reputable source. Make sure that it's from reputable sources. Let's see what it's going for here though. So we're going for 399, 400 bucks, 359. To me, that's a little bit high. You could still put you know some of that money down towards a new iPhone. But you know, at the same time, a thousand dollar phone that only costs 300 bucks now, there's a big sacrifice in no LTE. I probably would just swing for the 12 Pro Max at this point. So it's kind of hard to recommend this just because of the LTE. But if you wanted to try one, these phones are still very capable devices in the iPhone 11 Pro Max. At the end of the day, the, the 14 Pro Max has basically had leaps and bounds performance improvements in the performance, the camera, and um, the actual battery life hasn't been drastically better. Um, but overall, it's really down to the refinements. Apple has made some pretty good refinements and they've just been improving and improving on a product that has been well known to perform well over the years. And that's basically what I experienced going all the way here to the iPhone 14 Pro Max. Apple's currently giving around 300 bucks for a trade-in on the 11 Pro Max. It might drop as the iPhone 15 models come out. So you might wanna go get your gift card and apply it towards the upcoming phone, you know, before it drops. But at the same time, 
I would say it's probably time to consider an upgrade from 11 Pro Max, but I still think you could hold on one more year if you needed to. It's going to get 17 and the phone is definitely performing solid. So you can make it till the 16 if you don't like what's out now and what's coming out this month, this upcoming month. If you don't like what you see there, I still think the 11 Pro Max is definitely a functional usable phone for the next year. So thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you haven't already. Nick here. Be sure to be well. I'll catch you all in the very next episode. And peace.